communities across Ontario. Thank you for stocking our shelves, moving our goods, delivering our food, and so much more to support the fellow Ontarians during this tough time. Too many of those heroes live and work without regular benefits such as dental and eye care. This has been an issue for years and today we're taking a step to fix it. I wish to share with you a story of a constituent of mine. She worked as a food delivery driver. She worked incredibly hard at her work during her many years of service. She has helped keep many small businesses afloat and brought joy to many families who needed an escape. However, she does not have access to the same workplace benefits that many of us do. She has given us so much, and we believe that she and workers like her deserve better. And building that better tomorrow starts today. To share how our government is working for our workers, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome, I always call the champion for workers, Minister Monty McNaughton to the podium. Thank you so much. Well, thank you uh, so much, Deepak, for that uh, introduction and for all the work that you're doing uh, to stand up for workers and families uh, as my parliamentary assistant uh, at the Ministry of Labour, Training and Skills Development. Uh, good morning, everyone. As we turn the corner and look to the future, we must build back a stronger Ontario. We cannot and will not go back to where we were before. Our government, led by Premier Ford, is working for workers and we're putting them in the driver's seat of Ontario's future. We're leaving no worker behind. Today, more and more workers are building their careers across multiple employers, or they are venturing out on their own, starting businesses or working in the gig economy. They deserve the peace of mind of health and dental coverage when they need it. But right now, less than a quarter of those who work part-time or in precarious jobs have benefits. Whether you're bussing tables, working the cash, or giving rides, necessities like dental and affordable medication should be within reach for more of our families. It's time we rebalance the scales. Workers, no matter how or where they choose to work, should know our government has their back. That's why I'm pleased to announce that we are moving forward towards expanding benefits, such as health and dental benefits, to millions more workers in Ontario. By bringing the best minds together, we will be designing a portable benefit strategy for Ontario that ties health and dental insurance to workers, not their employers. The future of work isn't coming, it's already here. And our government is acting decisively with first of their kind policies that put workers and their families first. Nobody in a province as prosperous as Ontario should have to choose between their health, their next meal, or a roof over their head. And with historic labor shortages in many areas of our economy, it's policies like these that will give us a competitive advantage. Giving more workers the guarantee of health and dental benefits would give them the certainty and freedom they need to take risks and advance their careers. But today's announcement is especially good news for women, low-wage earners, newcomers, and young people who are less likely to have workplace benefits. Joining me today to share her story is Marlena. She's a server uh, here in Toronto and for months she didn't have benefits while working. Her experience shows us how important health and dental benefits are to workers and their families. The steps we're taking today will help protect our workers, build stronger families, and make Ontario a place where the future works for you. And now I'd like to welcome uh, Marlena to share her story uh, and just the importance of uh, expanding coverage to millions of more workers uh, in Ontario. Marlena, over to you. Thanks. 
Hello, uh, my name is Marlena Perone. Um, I work at George on Queen in uh, Toronto here in our city. Um, I've been working in hospitality for over 10 years um, uh, with a variety of full-time and part-time uh, employment uh, here at uh, George on Queen. You know, it not only takes uh, the six-month probation period, but an additional um, three-month activation period for benefits to um, uh, take place. And, uh, you know, that can be a long time for people with um, uh, daily medical health care, um, you know, who require prescriptions and having these health care benefits um, is not just a reactionary um, period for when we are sick or when our family members are not well, if we have injuries uh, that happen on the job, but um, uh, also preventative care to keep us healthy and working uh, for the public um, and, uh, you know, uh, to keep us uh, uh, healthy every day. So uh, it's entirely important for everybody to have access to these benefits and uh, be able to stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Marlena, for sharing uh, that story and just the importance of uh, ensuring that workers have uh, benefits uh, here in Ontario. So thank you for, for that very personal uh, story. So with that, we are um, happy to take uh, questions. Colin, Mr. I want to ask you about uh, something that could be potentially happening outside Queen's Park this weekend. Uh, there is the potential of some kind of a truck convoy coming to Queen's Park. The mayor of Toronto has warned them not to block the access around uh, hospitals just south of Queen's Park. Um, if this protest does materialize, what is your message to those who might be coming here? Well, certainly uh, we love our truckers. They've kept our uh, supply chains uh, going. Uh, it's one of the reasons why uh, we are the first in Canada to bring forward legislation to ensure that uh, truck drivers and food delivery uh, workers had access uh, to washrooms. Uh, I know uh, they have uh, some of them have concerns with uh, the federal government's uh, mandate, but my message uh, to those truckers that may be coming uh, to Toronto, please be respectful, uh, be peaceful, uh, respect uh, the hospital system and those patients that need to access uh, health care and also be mindful of those small businesses that are now just getting uh, their doors open to uh, grow their businesses. So be peaceful, uh, be respectful, uh, and follow the rules. We've been seeing what's been happening in Ottawa. They've been entrenched in that city for, for a number of days. They've been looking to meet with members of the federal government. Likely, if they come down here, the demands would be the same to drop uh, you know, the proof of vaccination requirements, as an example, in all Ontario businesses, uh, to drop the masking requirements and to meet, probably, with members of the Ford government. Will members of your government or your cabinet meet with any uh, convoy protesters who might come to Queen's Park? Well, look, uh, we're taking a, a very cautious uh, and measured approach. We want to beat uh, COVID-19 uh, once and for all. Look, I know there's uh, concerns out there. We heard uh, loudly uh, in uh, Ottawa over the past number of days uh, the issues they have with uh, the federal government and their mandate. But again, my message is be peaceful, be respectful, uh, ensure that people can live uh, uh, life normally and get to the hospital and, and support uh, the small businesses that are open uh, here in Toronto. So that's my message uh, to them. And just finally on this, if they ask for a meeting, with the Premier or with members of your government, should the Premier meet with any, you know, protesters from any truck convoy that come to Queen's Park? Well, look, I, I'm not going to uh, speak on behalf of uh, my colleagues, but I can tell you we've had the backs uh, of truckers throughout this entire pandemic. Uh, that's why Premier Ford and our government brought forward the Working for Workers Act uh, last fall to ensure they have access uh, to washrooms. I remember uh, in March of 2020 when the pandemic just hit, uh, Ontario truck drivers were going to factories to uh, warehouses and there were signs posted saying um, you know uh, washrooms are for employees only uh, if anyone who's not an employee has to use the washroom uh, go into the woods I mean that's yeah. the disrespect that we've seen uh, through this pandemic uh, for many truckers and we've moved to uh, resolve that uh, truck drivers have kept supply chains going they're important uh, but I just ask them, the, the small minority of truckers that are coming here to Toronto, uh, and if they do, to be peaceful and respectful and follow the rules. Minister, good morning. Good morning, Jamie. Uh, Randy Hillier has been increasing um, thinly veiled, inappropriate 
um, threatening Twitter uh, messages. Um, does that concern you? Like recently, last night, he posted uh, jerry cans and uh, mortar shells or, or artillery shells. Um, he's threatened, uh, he's called uh, politicians terrorists. Are, are you concerned? And uh, what can happen? Like, is, is this an environment that should be of a sitting MPP? Look, this is not Canada when you hear an elected member uh, say things like that. We've come so far, all of us together, uh, to battle uh, COVID-19. I mean, it's impacted Ontario, it's impacted uh, every other place uh, around the world, and we're moving uh, to a much better place. We have uh, businesses that have uh, reopened. Uh, we need to give them uh, that chance to succeed and to grow uh, their businesses. That's why when we hear of uh, uh, the convoy that might be coming to Toronto, we ask that they be respectful, uh, respect those small businesses that are, uh, you know, many are family owned. Uh, but uh, again, we're better when we work uh, together to overcome this. We've come so far and we're doing much better than uh, many other places in the world. But the content and the messaging he's doing is, is to some disturbing. Um, you find it disturbing and is there any, it, it, do we just continue absorbing this or how, how is there anything that can happen to this MPP? Well, look, it is disturbing. Uh, it's wrong. It's not Canadian. Uh, this is Canada. We work uh, together. And this is a, a global pandemic that has changed the lives of uh, every single person uh, in this country. We have to work together to overcome this. We're moving uh, in a much uh, better direction now with things uh, reopening and getting life uh, back to normal. That has to be the goal. And we have to keep working together. I understand uh, their frustrations with uh, the Trudeau government and, and the federal government's mandate, uh, but uh, it's time to be respectful and, and be peaceful. And how is this again, and all the politicians, a lot of the politicians, MVPs, come back here to debate. Um, are you worried for safety? No, given, I mean, given what's happened, not only just in on that one MVP's Twitter account, but another in other realms. Uh, no, I mean, I, I believe Queen's Park is a, a safe place, uh, uh, always has been. Um, but again, uh, we just have to keep uh, working together, uh, workers and businesses and government, and uh, just get through this uh, pandemic uh, once and for all and to get life back to normal for everyone. Great. And uh, we'll go to the phone lines now if, uh, if we could have the first question, please. Your first question comes from Charlie Pinkerton with iPolitics. Please go ahead. Hi there, Mr. Um, I'm just wondering about uh, another recommendation that was actually in the future of uh, work panels list that also relates to gig workers. Um, the recommend or the announcement you're making today seems to cover recommendation um, eight, which was to appoint an expert to design and test a uh, portable benefits program. But the other one, uh, recommendation 15, was to recognize gig, gig workers as dependent contractors, which would entitle them to things like termination pay. Um, regular wages and minimum uh, wage as well. By not including this in your plan today for this uh, future panel to provide recommendations on, um, is your government signaling that this recommendation, uh, number 15, is not going to be looked into or move forward with in any way? Uh, no, I mean, we've uh, moved forward uh, quickly uh, to uh, ensure that we're working for workers. Uh, we're the first uh, in Canada to bring forward a right to disconnect policy. We're the first uh, in the country to ban non-compete uh, clauses. Uh, we'll be the first in North America to expand uh, health uh, and dental benefits uh, to millions of workers. Uh, so we're going to uh, move forward. Uh, I committed when the report came out that uh, we're going to move forward on expanding uh, those benefits. Uh, but I can tell you, Charlie, there is more to come. Uh, I know people have been surprised what Premier Ford and our government uh, did last fall. Uh, we're announcing, uh, of course, today expanding those benefits to millions of more workers, uh, but there is more to come uh, when the legislature resumes on February 22nd. So, sorry, so just to be clear, do you mean that and we should expect that this recommendation, number 15, from that same report, um, doing this, making these workers dependent contractors, 
is something that we would likely see before an election. And you know, the the wording you use about uh, becoming the first jurisdiction to introduce the benefits that you are doing today. This panel isn't supposed to be appointed according to the press release of this announcement until spring 2022. So that doesn't give much time um, in the existence of this government in, in this form. Um, but but is your government going to introduce uh, legislation to do what this panel will recommend before the election, or or is this something that would have to happen afterwards? So it'd be great if you could address both those points. Yeah, you know, I, I can tell you when it comes to expanding uh, benefits to millions of more workers uh, in the province, uh, that is uh, what we're going to get done for those workers. Uh, the panel will be uh, up and going uh, in a matter of weeks. Uh, obviously, this is a, a very complex uh, a plan to put together. I mean, there's no blueprint anywhere in North America uh, to do this. Uh, I'm proud that we're leading uh, the way uh, to be there for workers and to build stronger families. I mean, ultimately, uh, that's what this is for. When you think uh, only 25% of uh, workers that work in part-time work or um, in precarious jobs have access uh, to benefits, uh, that's wrong. Uh, we're not going back to where we were uh, before the pandemic hit. This is about building back uh, a stronger province, a more fairer province uh, for every worker and, and for every uh, family. Uh, but there is uh, more work uh, to do. There's uh, more action that's coming. Uh, again, we passed the Working for Workers Act uh, in the fall, and as I said, the legislature resumes February 22nd, uh, and there's more changes to come to rebalance those scales to really put workers in the driver's seat. Perfect. I think that's it. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.